Um, again, whenever I'm putting titles up here, I want you to think about that is our objective. If I put students will be able to, the objective is? They'll be able to do two sections. Perfect. <laughs> here is the first example I want you guys to write down. My other favorite variable is why. I like why. I like X. My biggest problem with Y is the tail kind of sometimes gets in the way, but I don't know. We're doing fractions and I wanted the tail hanging down. I'm going to show you two ways to solve this problem. The first way is the way the book does it. I'm subtracting fractions here, right? What's the rule about adding and subtracting fractions? the denominator has to be the? What should I change these denominators to so they're all the same? Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite this as y over eight minus something over eight equals something over eight. What am I gonna change those, those numerators to? Six and 10. And then, now that they're like denominators, I can just start solving my equation. I'm going to work with the, the fraction that doesn't have the variable in it first. Plus 6 over 8, plus 6 over 8. That's going to zero it out on the left, leaving me with the fraction with the variable. And 10 over 8 plus 6 over 8 gives us 16 over 8. Now, your gut feeling when you first look at 16 over 8 is to divide that because your brains are probably already thinking 2, but that's not our next step because we need to get this y isolated. And right now, it is being multiplied by an invisible 1 over 8. So to undo that, we're going to do the inverse, which is to multiply by 8 over 1. You guys with me? 8 times 1 is 8, 1 times 8 is 8, so 8 over 8 cancels out to become an invisible 1, leaving the y by itself. Do you guys see that happening? Yeah. This and this cancel each other out because 8 over 8 is 1. And then this and this cancels each other out, leaving us with just what? That's the book way. That's the way to do it with fractions. But what did I tell you the other day? I'm not fond of fractions. And if I can see a way to get rid of them, I'm going to try to work without them. So here's my way. We're going to rewrite the first problem. Now I want you to think about, what did we change this denominator to? because it's the least common multiple, right? If I multiply this entire equation by the least common multiple, which is really eight over one, I'm gonna get rid of my denominators. These two cancel each other out, don't they? Yeah. So I'm gonna have just y. I have to do distributive property because I'm multiplying this and this by this 8 over 1. What's 8 times 3? Divided by 4. But there's a negative there, so it's going to be y minus 6 equals 8 times 5 divided by 4. And now I just have to add what? I got to the same number. Do you see why I like my method? When I first showed it to you the other day, it wasn't with the perfect scenario, but I just want you to think when I see denominators, does it make sense to try to get rid of them by multiplying by a least common multiple? And in this case, did it make it easier? Right? Let's try another one. A lot of writing, so I'm going to move my page up there. Write 2x over 5 
minus one half equals five. If you were going to make those common denominators, what number would you use? That's the same number I can multiply by to get rid of my denominators. Do you see my thinking there? So if I do 10 over 1 to both sides of the equations, I'm going to get rid of my, my denominators and then I'm not working with fractions anymore. 10 times 2 divided by 5 four. and the 4 is attached to the x right don't forget this is distributive property I have to do it to both we took care of this one now we have to do 10 times 1 divided by 2 is five. and what symbol was in front of that one half negative. and this was a positive so it's going to stay a negative equals what What do I do next? Uh, add, five. add 5. I get 4x is equal to 55. Okay, We cleaned this up by getting rid of denominators, but to be honest with you, our answer is going to be a fraction because 55 does not divide evenly by 4. And here's one of the lovely things about algebra. You don't have to simplify that. We don't call them improper fractions in algebra because we feel like that gives them a complex. It's just a fraction. You don't have to just to change it into a mixed number. It can, but we don't need to make it a decimal. We started with a fraction, we can leave it at a fraction. It's a little bit freeing, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to have you guys do something I don't always do, but we're going to use page 10 to take some more notes on. Who feels like they could do some problems with fractions and try my method to see if you could clean that up? Okay, that doesn't mean you're confident and you feel like you're going to ace something if I suddenly gave you a pop quiz, but you feel like you could go practice it and try it out? Okay, let's try a couple of problems on the left side, page 10, and I want you to title this one, Simplifying before solving. Basically, we're going to have some like terms in our equation that we want to put together before we start to try to solve. So example one, 6x plus 3 minus 8x equals 13. You don't need to put like terms together to simplify them, but I like to because you have to think about terms as traveling. I always picture them like a little magnet. This is the positive 6x, and what is its like term here? Negative 8x. This whole little thing travels together. So I like to rewrite them just so I make sure that I'm keeping the positives and negatives with their term. It would be really easy, especially if you're going kind of fast and maybe you're doing your homework while you're watching your younger brother or sister and things are crazy. Without moving that, you could easily look at that and realize that it should be 2x, but forget that it's a negative 2x. But if you put these two together, you're going to see it more clearly. Do you see what I mean by that? Yes, we like our shortcuts, but we also like to make sure we're doing things correctly. So take the extra step when it's needed. This is negative 2x plus 3 equals what? Uh huh. What do you think is next? Minus 3. What? Negative 2x is equal to 10. Divide by? I mean, the negative 2 that's with the x. Yep, we understood what you meant. 10 divided by negative 2 is negative. You can probably see how easy it would be for somebody to come up with x equals 5 if they had not kept this together and they dropped that negative up there, <coughs> right?
Okay, this is my final example and the one I want to take the most time on because it has the most potential for small mistakes. So if you are not understanding something that I'm doing, I want you to let me know. It looks simple, except I just wrote it wrong. <laughs> this is why I should use pencil, but pencil doesn't show up on the camera as well. Okay, let me try again. Nine mi equals six minus one, parentheses, x plus two. I was like, wait, that has no variable. What are we doing? Okay, I fixed it. I do not want to move on while you're writing down my example. So when you're finished, could you put your pencil up just like this? The very first step here is really important. Turn and tell your neighbor what you think the first step is. And stop. Who wants to volunteer an idea? Mylon? Distributive property. I heard many people say it. If you said distributive property, hand in the air, pat yourself on the back. What are we going to distribute? This right here. But here's what I want to show you. Your book didn't write it this way. The book had it like this. What did I add to it to make it clear that it was distributed property? I made the one visible. Do you see how confusing this might be? Even with the one there, some of you missed that we had to distribute first. If there's a minus there, there's an invisible one there. And so we have to distribute. If it was a positive one, we wouldn't need to worry about it because multiplying by positive one doesn't change anything. But multiplying by negative one does what? Changes what, Yui? It changes the symbol. So these are both positive. They're going to both turn negative. So we're going to rewrite this. 9 equals 6 minus x minus 2. I know. We had a long conversation in third period about what happened to the plus sign that was up here. We just made it invisible. I could rewrite this. I'll just write it over here as an example of another way to write the same thing. I could say 9 equals 6 plus a negative x plus a negative 2. And there's still two things invisible there. Three, actually. We don't put a plus in front of positives. We just leave those invisible. There's one more thing invisible I haven't written in. It's a one right there. Yeah. This is an example of we love our shortcuts in math, and there's some of them you guys already know just because of how you came up learning about positive numbers first. What your elementary teachers don't really teach you because it's just too confusing for little kids. If I write 6 minus 4 equals 2, picture how they taught that idea to little kids. It could be using your fingers and take away how many? Four. Or they could give them a pile of beads or something and they would have them count out six and take away four, leaving what? The reality is you're not just taking away. The only time that really works is when you're at the store and you're paying somebody else money. Usually we're moving up and down the number line. So picture, if I have positive six, Thank you. And a negative 4. On my number line, I'd start at 6. And when I say plus, I really mean and. And then when I say negative or minus, I mean go to the left. left. And that is going to equal positive 2. 
Do you see how many invisibles we just have in math all the time? <laughs> Let's go back to our problem. This looks simplified, and it really is pretty close to being finished. And we just left out a bunch of stuff so it doesn't look all messy like this. Do you guys see the difference? Yeah. So if you wonder why a minus disappeared or a plus disappeared, ask. Okay? Don't just assume that everybody else knows and you don't. Who learned something about things we have invisible today? Raise it high because a lot of people... Look, yeah, see? I'm so happy you're learning. Okay. What are my like terms here? Okay, I could rewrite this as 6 minus 2 minus x, and then I would do 9 equals 4 minus x. What's next? Minus 4. I get 5 is equal to what? Negative x. Negative x. Is my negative x by itself, or is there an invisible there? There's an invisible one, and it's negative, so we're not finished because we only finish when there's an invisible positive one. We have to divide by negative one again. This negative is going to change our symbol, right? Five equals x. Okay, I want to check this one, and I'm going to go back and write it the way the book had it. Five equals x. Nine equals six. Thank you. See, even I make mistakes. 9 equals 6 minus x plus 2. Remember, this is the way the book had it originally. We're going to now go plug in that negative 5 and see if we can make this work. 9 equals 6 minus negative 5 plus 2. What was our very first step? Distributive property. What are we distributing? One. What kind of 1? So it's, it's an invisible negative right now, but the negatives there, we just have the ones invisible. So the six stays. Negative one times negative five makes that a positive, positive five. Negative one times positive two makes that a negative. negative two. And all I have left is addition and subtraction, so I can just work from left to right. six plus five minus two. Does it check? So we know, and if Huey hadn't caught me and I'd left that negative off there, we would have caught it when my problem didn't work out right. Okay? It's time to do some practice. Do I feel like you have this solid? No. Do I feel like you've had some exposure and you're ready to practice because that's how we actually learn? Okay? So here's the problems, and there's more today than yesterday, so you might be doing homework unless you use your time really well. It is page 96, number 7 to 18, 30 to 41. This is still, as I said earlier, in 2-3. Check the odds in the back of your book. I will actually leave my teacher's guide open up here, so if you want to come and check any of them, you can. Okay. Don't take the time to do a bunch of checks like this today. Check your odds, and if you're getting the odds right, you're probably doing okay, and we'll check your work tomorrow, okay?